But if you want to be a part of that, we'd love to have you join in with us. You can, you can give electronically through PayPal or through Square Cash, and you can get the download the Square Cash app and connect with us on that, or you can do it through your PayPal account. We'd love to have you. We're asking for a hundred dollar commitment uh, for twelve months, or a one time gift of twelve hundred, or you know, you can divide that up anyway. Four quarter, quarterly payments, say by a monthly, but I don't, we don't care. Um, but if you want to be a part of that, helping us get to that freedom, so that we can go do some other things that we really need to do for the kingdom. Instead of paying this off, we need to get this paid off and out of the way so we can go do these things. Amen. I'm already, I'm, I'm, I'm ready. Like, when can I get Estonia now? Yeah. Hallelujah. Get into another building. Hallelujah. A permanent place again. Well, we want a permanent home again. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And uh, and so we just, we got the, all these things out there we want to get to. And, uh, but the debt is, is, is a, uh, one of the things that, you know, oh, no man, anything but to love him. Well, there's a reason debt can be a weight. Now I understand when you buy a mortgage, you got a mortgage on your building and that kind of stuff. That's I, we're paying a lease payment every week, you know, a, a rent payment to use what the facilities we're using. Um, so it's really that's no different than paying on a building. Mm -hmm. But this other debt, this other debt that's just out there that we're not getting anything in return for, except that we were able to keep the church open six, seven years ago right. when, it, when we built it all up. That's that's what that's our return. So we've been paying extra for it ever since, right. and it's got it's got to go and it's on the way. Hallelujah. Can you see the top being blown off? Yeah. yeah. All right. Had that one made, made up, and every once in a while I just put it and say, this is what it looks like. <laughs> put, across the, put across the front of it something, you know, uh, invalid right now, or, some, or, you know, or vision. This is, they'll put vision on it or something. Like that. Vision. That ain't about vision, <laughs> you know, with the, with the top blown off in full so we can see, um, keep vision and see that happen. Amen? Amen. Uh, I believe it's coming. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. It's very, very, very soon. And then, then we're moving on to, to, to things we need to get to for the kingdom. Re reaching people, preaching the gospel, getting out, getting to a place where we, we, we can do things as a church that we need to do that, that reach our community that we're really limited in right this second. This, this just doesn't afford itself to being able to do some of these things. And uh, we're grateful we can, us. I'm grateful we've been able to keep our church together through this difficult season. Yeah. And not lose our church. If some places are going to shut down. We're not shut down. We're still going. Yeah, and yeah. we're coming out. And we're yeah. going to be moving into higher places and better places. Amen? Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. All right. Everybody ready to give? Amen. Hallelujah. Those online, if you want to give, go ahead. You can send that in electronically. We, we love you. We, we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless the people as they tithe and as they give. We thank you, Father God, that the windows of heaven are open unto them and that you empty out of them blessings. They don't have room enough to receive. We thank you that we're delights of land. We lend the many and don't borrow. And the, the devourer has been rebuked by you for our sake in Jesus' name. And everyone agree by that, with that by saying amen. 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 God bless you as you give. Hallelujah. Don't forget Wednesday night service. And also, another announcement, two weeks from today, uh, we will be uh, having our uh, fifth Sunday fellowship here at the community center. And um, we're looking forward to that. It's going to be a good time in the Lord. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. And then what we need for you to do is uh, it's going to be an um, international day. So if you cook Daikano, go ahead. If you cook Italiano, hey, go ahead. If you cook Southern, bring it. <laughs> We are international. Southern food is international. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Chinese. The northerners think we're a different country. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's messing with you. You folks up north. Actually, they probably do. Uh, you know, because we are different. Different culture, different talking, different, different cooking. I remember we went to, Jane and I, when we were young, went to Pennsylvania to the Poconos on a trip, and we, we ordered fried chicken. <laughs> now first of all it was pigeon not, not really pigeon but it was the size of a pigeon second they didn't have any batter on it and they had on the menu southern fried chicken <laughs> I'm from the south that ain't southern fried chicken yeah yeah Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It was like, you know, praise the Lord. We're, we're a different country. Amen. Just messing. Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. Amen. Well, Children's Church Preschool, you're dismissed to go to classes this time. Hallelujah. And uh, glory to God.
Bye-bye. <laughs> Let's have you go ahead and open your Bibles to the 10th chapter of John's Gospel. And we will read once again our foundation text from where we've been ministering. Um, verses 6 through 10, this parable Jesus spake unto them, but they understood not what things uh, were which he spake unto them. Then Jesus said unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. By me, I am the door, by me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and he shall go in and out, and then find pasture. The thief cometh not but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, and in that they might have it more abundantly. Hallelujah. And as we've said before, and we'll say it again, that this word life is zoe. Uh, we often describe or, or phrase it as eternal life or everlasting life, which is true. But the word carries a deeper meaning. Me and actually means according to W.E. Vines, expository New Testament Greek words, life in the manner that God possesses it. The life that the Father gave to the incarnate Son to have within himself, and in which the Son gave to us to have in ourselves. Praise the Lord. It is the life that God has. It's the absolute life. It's absolute life. Because God is life. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. And Jesus said that he came to give us life and have it to us more abundantly. We talked about what God doesn't give us. We won't cover that because Satan comes to steal, kill, destroy. He's come to give us life more abundantly. And then we, you know, we read um, Psalm uh, 103, verses 1, 2, 3, and 4. And the fourth verse says, Who redeems your life from destruction, crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, satisfies your mouth with good things, so that your, your youth is renewed like the eagles. Can you say amen? amen? And we've been talking about the good things that we get our mouth satisfied with. Righteousness is good. Healing is good. Uh, prosperity is good. I believe last week we were talking about soundness of mind is good. It's good to have a sound mind. Amen? Amen. And then, you know, deliverance is good. Amen. It's good to be free. Amen. I said it's good to be free. Amen. There's nothing like being free. Yeah, amen. Amen? Yeah, amen? I'll tell you, um, a number of years ago, we were, we were having a church service, and the word of the Lord came to me, and I began to talk about someone who had, um, who had uh, been so bound up they couldn't breathe. It's, so you can get so bound up, you can't hardly breathe. Because you're under such stress, such pressure. And um, finally, I, I just, you know, it's one of those words of knowledge that people didn't respond to. And I, I kept with it. You know, you got, when, when you know God has spoken, you got to stay with it no matter what anything else around you says. Amen. So I just kept waiting. And, I, and actually, I kept ministering to some other people that, you know, the, uh, a word of knowledge about the other things would come out. I was going to other people, and I kept coming back to that one. Finally, somebody got up and came up the front. And uh, I laid hands on them, and uh, man, the power of God knocked them. I mean, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't, you know, you knocked them before. <laughs> a little side joke. I remember um, Bishop Nye from the Pentecostal Holiness Church in Korea, South Korea, came to our church back when he first got saved. And he believed if you didn't fall out in the spirit, he'd knock you out in the spirit. Because <laughs> when he laid hands on you, it was like, wham! Your jaws shook when he hit you. Was that the Holy Ghost? It was in his hand. Not sure which one I got knocked with. I mean, you were going down one way or the other. <laughs> it's your boy. Whack! Hallelujah. But, uh, you know, the power of God hit that person. They were in the floor, and they got up, and they stood up, <coughs> tears pouring down their face. And uh, when they, they, they began to talk about how they came, not really knowing they were that bound. Mm -hmm. And did not know that they couldn't breathe until they took their first breath after have, having hands laid on them. And the power of God liberating and setting them free. Mm -hmm. So they started breathing and realized, I haven't had to breathe. Because the power of God is suffering. Ed Taylor didn't do a thing. Amen? I can't heal a gnat's wing. I wouldn't heal him if I could, but I couldn't heal a gnat's wing. Yeah. Couldn't deliver anybody. It is God. Yeah. Amen? And so the Lord ministered to that person and set them free. 
And, um, and they didn't even know they were that man. That's just, that, that amazes me. You know, that you can't even know how bound you are. And it's, there's nothing like getting set free. Suddenly something happens to us when we get set free. Mm -hmm. yeah. Every, your perspective changes yeah. in life. Yeah. Amen. Everything about everything changes when you get a different view on that life. Yeah. And when you get set free, it changes how you view stuff. Praise the Lord. Colossians chapter 1 verse 13 says, Who has delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Probably you know, uh, here, power of darkness, <coughs> the, the authority of darkness. We, we're no longer under Satan's domain, Satan's authority. There's nothing more binding or nothing more demonstrative of bondage than Paul's uh, description, I believe in Romans chapter 7, of that which I would do, I do not, and that which I wouldn't do, I do. Yeah. Amen? Mm -hmm. That, that um, knowledge of being a Pharisee, of Pharisees, knowing the law demands you don't do this, you don't do this, and you're supposed to do this, you're supposed to do that, but the inability to do it. Yeah. And that's what Paul was talking about. Romans chapter 7 is not a New Testament standard for the Christian. It is a description of a man outside of Christ knowing to do right but not doing it. Wanting to do right but incapable of doing it. Wanting not to do wrong but incapable of stopping from doing it. That's captivity. That's bondage. Yes, yes. Yet Jesus came with the life of God and the liberating power of God to set humanity free. Amen. You're no longer under Satan's dominion. You're no longer under Satan's authority. You're no longer under Satan's power. Amen. By the power of God, you've been set free. Amen. He whom the Son has set free is free in thee. Amen. Amen. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you or make you free. It doesn't, you know, King James says, uh, we said the, the Amplified says make. Different translations state it. But it doesn't matter. You're free. Amen. I said you're free. Amen. Are you here? You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Remember what Jesus said when we talk about truth? He said, sanctify them through thy word. Thy word is truth. truth. Can you say amen? amen? Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I said glory be to God. Glory. God is a good God. Hallelujah. Yeah. Somebody say Jesus is Lord. Jesus amen. is Lord. Amen. He's, and he's good all the time. Amen. How many believe that? Amen. I said, how many believe that? Lord, yes. He's good all the time. Yes. And he came to liberate you. Yes. He came to take you out of the constraints and bondage of Satan's authority and to liberate you. This is where I, now listen, I, I, I'm harp on this. I will keep talking about this as long as people keep preaching stupid stuff in the church. Yeah. <laughs> all right. This is where I, I, I just veer away from the nutbag grace teaching. Uh, you can do whatever you want to do. You can drink anything you want to drink. You can smoke anything you want to smoke. You can do anything you want to do uh, sexually. You can live any way you want to live. And it doesn't matter because you're under grace. Now listen. I know people who are bound. I understand that. God wants them free. Amen. But when the church starts teaching people that it's okay, I can't deal with that. Why? Because Jesus came to deliver you from the power of darkness and translate you into the kingdom of God's dear son. Amen. His blood was shed. He was nailed to the cross. He paid the price. Became sin for us who knew no sin. That we might, might be made the righteousness of God in Him. For the express purpose of delivering us from Satan's authority and reconciling us to the Father. Amen. Not so you can keep doing what you were doing before. Amen. Under the guise that it's okay. Amen. If it was okay, Jesus didn't need to come. That's right. Hello? But it's not. And it's not that it's condemning to those who are captives. It's that they need the revelation and the truth and the understanding that Jesus came to set you free. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Not some bozo preacher making money off his tape series because he tells you it's okay to stay bound. Mm -hmm. I have no tolerance for that. Amen. Sorry. You're not, oh, yes, I am walking in love. I love the people that they're, they're ensnaring with their false doctrine. That's 
Right. Are there extreme doctrine? Yeah. Amen. 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 I mean, the, uh, the one of the churches in the book of uh, Revelation was commended for calling those who said they were pastors who were not pastors at all, or prophets, whichever one it was. I forgot. Prophet, 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 or pastor, Bill. Not sure. Okay. Ministers <laughs> that were not that were truly not ministers. They called them out. And they said they they were commended by the head of the church for that. Mm -hmm. Now we plus we call them unloving when we do that. Yeah. Well, Jesus did it. I don't think it's anybody that ever been on the planet that walked in love more than Jesus. Amen. Hello. Amen. I said hello. Amen. You ever here? You go home. Yep. Two of you here. Best day we left somewhere. Amen. Get off your phones. Get off the internet and stay here with us. All right. Amen. I'm not really messing with you. I'm telling the truth. Anyway. <laughs> Jesus came to liberate the captives. Yes. Yes. You know, Paul wrote and talked, and I know he was talking about, you know, in, to the books of the church of Galatia, he talked about them being entangled in the law, and why would you leave the liberty you found to be re-entangled with the law? But the same thing, I'll be honest with you, why would you leave the captivity of Egypt and want to go back there? Really? Which is exactly what the, the Israelites did. They got out for a few days, they ran into a little trouble, ran into a little tough place, and went to God, we were back in Egypt, at least we had something to eat. Well, you've been busting for 400 stinking years about the captivity and now you're free and running a little, little road bump and then you and I wish we were back in captivity. And two days after being back there, they'd be fussing about being back there. They had it better in the wilderness. Yep. Hello? Are you here? You go home. Yep. I was talking with someone recently. They are talking about how they know uh, people start out with, with their zeal for God. They're serving God. They love God. And then they begin to they begin to wane. And the things of the world begin to overtake them again. They begin to be more worldly and more worldlike. And then, you know, churches want to keep the people, keep, well, let's just put it like the butts in the seats. So they begin to compromise their message. Yep. Because they don't want anybody to feel bad. Because if they feel bad, they pack up and take their money with them. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, they're going to take their money with them anyway. They keep going with their head. And then you're going to be responsible, and you're going to be responsible for their failure because you didn't tell them to get right with God. Yep. Yeah. Amen. You didn't preach messages that would address the situations that they needed to have addressed so they could they could get that straight going with God. Yeah. You tried to placate it. You tried to get up in your church and tell them that homosexuality is okay with God. They, did, you know, and all this kind of stuff because they bring money into your church. Yeah. Well, how about give up your hand-tailored suits and your handmade shoes and your $300,000 automobile and preach the gospel and be, be subjected to no man's authority but to God. Yes. yes. Amen. And if people own you with their money, they own you. Oh, yes. Yes. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's true. Can I get an amen from somewhere? Amen. Looking for an amen corner or something, an amen mouse or something. Amen. Yeah, cricket's going off. Jesus shed his blood yep. to liberate you. Amen. He went to the cross. He died. He paid the price of sin, was raised from the dead. He now lives for one purpose, to make intercession for you. Amen. What? That you'll walk in the revelation and the understanding of his liberating power, glory to God. That you will experience the freedom that He's given unto you. That you can receive by faith and walk in through the power of grace. Yes. Grace is not the, the ability to do what you want to do. And it's okay. Grace is the power of God to empower you to do what God wants you to do. Yeah. His grace empowers you to live there. Amen. That's how you need to preach it. Amen. That's how you need to act on it. Yep. Jesus died and liberated you. And now by His grace, you are able to walk in that liberty. Amen. But you got to walk in it. Amen. Amen. Not by might, not by power, but by His Spirit. Yeah. His grace is there to undergird, to empower but you still got to cooperate. Yeah. Yeah. 
Hello. Amen. Are you here? You're going home. Amen. We got preachers saying stuff like, and you know that it basically happens automatically. It doesn't matter. You don't have to repent for sinning because you're already forgiven. Well, then everybody's going to heaven because every sinner is already forgiven. That's right. If you study your Bible and you study the, study the scriptures properly, God is not imputing their trespasses against them. Yep. Amen. But study the rest of it. If they reject Jesus Christ, they're going to come back on them. The only way to receive... See, he's already done his side. Yep. Yes. We're all, as far as God, God that we, have we told you this before? I know we said this before. Did you notice in the book of Revelation, when they opened the book, they looked and found whose names were blotted out. Blotted out. Or, you know, those that were there were the names who were not blotted out. Names get blotted out. Not, not put in. That's right. They're already in there. Amen. But when they reject Christ, they reject him and die in their sin. It get marked out. So sad. It's not that they weren't ever in there. You know, we used to sing this song about Pentecostal churches. And we all, you know, we, we love the song. There's a new name written down in glory. And it's mine. No, oh, yes, it's mine. You know? But it was written down the day Jesus was raised from the dead. Yeah. It didn't happen on July the 11th. 1979 at the first Pentecostal Holiness Church at the corner of Brinkley Road and Plaza Drive in Greenville, North Carolina on a Wednesday night after Brother uh, Linwood Hicks ministered. I don't even know what he taught on. <laughs> he was filling in for Pastor Gentry. And uh, I mean, I'm sitting there the whole service. I, they probably still have the hand grooves in the back of the pew in front of me where I'm holding on for the dear life not to get saved. <laughs> uh, and when he got done and they gave the altar call, I mean, next thing I know, I'm up. I'm out in the aisle and like, you know, who are you? What are you doing? All the way down. <laughs> My name didn't get written down that night. It was written down 2,000 years ago when Jesus was raised up and ascended and took his own blood into the heavenly holies of holies and washed and sanctified humanity by his blood. Glory to God. My name got written down then. Hallelujah. 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 It was already there. Those people whose names were written right beside mine and before and after mine, they're all in there at the same time. Yep. Who die in their sin will have that name blotted out of the Lamb's book of life. So we take our doctrines and we don't study the Bible enough. Just because you've already been forgiven doesn't mean you don't acknowledge and get that right before God. Right. Or that it's okay because you're already forgiven. Like I said the other week, that's simply a, a uh, variant of Gnosticism. Mm -hmm. See, Gnosticism taught the flesh wasn't really real, so it really didn't matter what you did with the flesh because everything was really spiritual, and only spiritual things matter. And then Paul, I mean, um, John writes to the church in his first letter and, and annihilates Gnosticism. <laughs> that which we've seen, which we've handled, we, we, we touched the word of life. You know, because it wasn't, they, they didn't even believe Jesus was really in the flesh, it was just spiritual. Okay? So when you start talking along those lines, you're just taking a variant of that and making it Gnosticism in the church under the guise of a doctrine. Yeah. Right. The devil is out there modifying stuff all the time. Right. So that people will swallow a hook, line, and sinker. Yep. Right. Right. Amen? Amen? You're the price. Yes, right. amen. And Jesus wants you to know the freedom of your deliverance. And if you're if you're you're sitting around going, man, it don't matter what I do, I'm under grace. You're sitting right there with the power of the be liberated. And you're like that person who came up to get prayed for. Don't even didn't know she couldn't breathe. Something just unction her to come. 
didn't know she couldn't breathe until she started breathing. Yeah. The worst deception is self-deception because yeah. you don't believe you're deceived. And when you begin to believe that it's okay to be bound, and you don't really feel bound because you're, I mean, you're, being taught, you're being taught that that's really freedom. Mm. It's non-legalism. It's liberty. And I'm, I'm sorry. I have to say this with, 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 with a sad heart. I believe a lot of it's just because the people preaching it want money. They got big ministries and big churches and big television contracts and big stadiums to fill. And they got to pay for all of it. Amen. So they give what people want to hear, so they'll give to it. Amen. Yeah. Amen. You can blow enough smoke up anybody's skirt, they'll, they'll, they'll empty the bank account mm -hmm. to support it. That's why people fall for all these schemes all the time. Mm -hmm. Smart people, usually. <laughs> and they'll empty their bank accounts. Yep. Because of because of slickness, God will judge those people, yep. and His ministers that did it for filthy lucre will be judged. Yes, yes. And I, you know, it's sad because we know they're called, we know they're anointed, they know they were, they were called of God. In most cases, they got off. Right. Some cases, they're just emissaries of the devil, flat out. Right. right. And uh, I mean, I remember a story of Lester Summerall. He was with a, a young minister was with him, and he said, "Get in the car." And uh, he drove over to a church. Uh, I don't know how many, how many miles away from where he was. Walked around the building, he found another girl went in and counted the seats. And apparently, this guy had been on television saying they'd sat so many thousands of people or whatever in this building. He went and counted the seats. <laughs> Turned around, the young man says, "Don't ever exaggerate how many people you have." <laughs> Good for him. Uh huh. And then there was another minister, and uh, he, he he did something that, about that one, and turned that young that young minister and and, and, and rebuked what he had been doing, saying and stuff. Uh, you don't mess with someone. <laughs> Bull in the china shop. But it was true. Yeah. There are things we do we do in ministry that are not godly because of money. And understand there are times that messages come out and people ex ex exploit that message in order to get for, for gain. And will not back off of it because it's going to cost them. Because people gravitate to that. You turn on the television. You can have this lifestyle if you'll buy my 12, this is old, but 12 cassette tape series on how to make money in real estate yeah. for $400 plus shipping and handling, <laughs> 12. Wow. We're over $30 a piece yeah. for a, 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 dollar, a, a 98 cent cassette. Quite a market. Oh, but the, the information there is invaluable. No, because if you were making that much money in real estate, you wouldn't be going out selling $400 pictures. You'd be making your money. Yeah. You're making your money off a four hundred dollar tape series. That's right. That's right. On television, you're you're making a fortune off of that, mm -hmm. not selling the real estate. That's right. That's right. Amen. Yep. It's it's like um, you know I, I'll be honest with you. I get aggravated with um, ministers who come in. They're going to come. They're going to come into your church and they're going to teach you how to grow your church. But they're going to charge you X number of dollars per person in your church to teach you how to grow it. Well, how about just, you know, receive love offerings and go on your merry little way? Mm -hmm. You know, and bless the kingdom. Amen. Oh, my. Oh, my. That's enough. Yeah. So anyway, when we have these messages in the church that allow people to stay bound, there's something wrong with it. Because what Jesus came to do was not put you in captivity, but to liberate you. And he didn't come when you were in captivity and say, tough, pal, stay bound, but be happy there. Right. No. He came to liberate you, to set you free, to bring you out, to establish you, glory to God, and to give you a message that would keep you free. Amen. 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 So freedom is good. Liberty is good. 
He translated you. He wants you to know that you're free. Amen. Amen. Like I said, when the, when the woman came to be prayed for that day with me, and we prayed for her, and she goes, I didn't even know I was bound. When we give a false message to the church and we tell them that, you know, you can sin because you're under grace. You can do this because you're under grace. You can live this way because you're under grace. It doesn't matter with God. You're pre-forgiven. It just doesn't matter. You know, no, no, no. Jesus wants you free. Amen. Amen. But when people don't know they're bound or being told that they're not really bound and they don't have to repent and they can stay that way, they can stay that way and stay that way and stay that way and it's okay. We're letting them stay bound. Right. When the power to be free is right there. Right there. Right. Amen. And I'm going to tell you something. There's nothing like being free. Amen. Amen. I said there's nothing like being free. Amen. I can remember. You ought to be able to remember. The day you came to Jesus Christ. I mean, I, I, I grew up Pentecostal. I grew up in a Pentecostal. The Pentecostal Holiness Church. Okay. We believe in sanctification is the second definite def work of grace. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, we had all of our doctrine and all that kind of stuff. But I was Pentecostal. But I wasn't saved. I was unsaved Pentecostal. But I remember God began to deal with me and for, for weeks. And, you know, I would read the book of Revelation because I heard a lot of sermons on Revelation. <laughs> Yeah, so, I, six, six, six in the forehead. I mean, you know, I've seen chick tracks for the six, six, six on the babies and all this stuff. And, um, you know, and I'm, I'm thinking, I don't want to go to hell. I don't want to go to hell. I don't want to go to hell. Okay. I'll get saved this Sunday, Lord. I promise I'm going to get saved. <laughs> Sunday, I'd get by. I'd get by. I'd miss church. Whew, dodge another bullet. <laughs> And God would begin to deal with me again. Sunday night. <laughs> I go through the whole week. Oh God, I'll, I'll go to church this Sunday. You can't even enjoy sin. When, like, when, when the Holy Ghost gets all over like a sick of two old dog. <laughs> and I went through this for weeks. <laughs> but like I said that night, I gave my heart to Jesus and I, I was on crutches. I pulled a hamstring playing ball. And uh, I hobbled down to the altar and I, and I gave my life to Jesus. And I am telling you, you know, Grandma's over there dancing. Woo! You know, she's like doing the Pentecostal dance all over here. Praise he got saved. <laughs> oh, my God. We, we got him in. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Yeah, could be with somebody else. Got that one in. Oh, praise God. <laughs> and the freedom... The liberty. The, I mean, it wasn't, didn't work up to be that freedom. Didn't work up. I mean, the moment yes. sin rolled off. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. You understand Martin Luther King using that old spiritual song in his speech, free at last? Free at last. Free at last. Mm -hmm. Thank God Almighty, I'm free at last. And that was a song. But it wasn't just a, you know, a, a speech. He even says that. It's old, the old spiritual. Right. I'm free at last. I'm free at last. Thank God the Almighty. I'm free at last. There was nothing like that liberty. Yep. Amen. Amen. But Satan don't give up that easy. He wants to come back. And, I'll never forget. He starts telling me I'm not saved. You're not saved. You're not saved. That's just emotional experience. That was on Sunday. On Wednesday. Sunday night I got there. And I got baptized in the Holy Ghost. Speaking in the other tongue. <laughs> So on the way home, he said, tongues are of the devil, tongues are of the devil, tongues are of the devil. He let the hate get saved part alone. Because right. <laughs> he got past that. Yeah. You know? Hallelujah. And then that next week, um, you know, I, I was on the crutch. I, pulled, I put, severely pulled a handspring, you know? I was lifting weights back then. I was just a beast. I mean, I was huge. And uh, I was running first base, hot, 98 degrees that day, sweating like crazy, and, and stretched to, to make out an infield hit, and, and it popped. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, then I am. Well, I'm saved. I'm healed too. Praise God. You know? So I go ahead and start playing ball. It's hurts. I'm playing. I'm, I'm playing. I'm healed. We had a bad inning. I came in and threw my glove and I cussed. About two weeks after I'm saved. I've been saved all two weeks. <laughs> what in the blank are you guys doing out there? I'm going to be telling everybody I'm saved. You know, here I am. Say, I'm saved. Praise God. <laughs> I was crazy for Jesus. <laughs> Hadn't changed a whole lot anyway. I sit down on the bench. I'm crying. Lord, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And then, 
You ain't, you ain't even saved. So you, you, what, what were you doing talking down weird language like you? But I repented. I said, I, I repented. Mm -hmm. You don't have to repent, you're under grace. No. You know what repentance did? It liberated me. Yeah. Yeah. It liberated me from the guilt and condemnation that came with knowing I, I displeased God yeah. with my action. Yeah. <laughs> it brought freedom. Yeah. Amen. 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 And then, you know, and, and almost instantly, I knew I was called to the ministry. And within a year, I was out in Tulsa. They rang a Bible training center. Never heard Kenneth Hagin in person. I heard 15 minutes of one tape from him before I ever got to Tulsa. <laughs> God spoke and I ended up out there and learned how to stay free. Amen. Glory. Glory. See, the word taught me how to stay free, not how to get away with being bound. Amen. Amen. I want to stay free. Can you say amen? Amen. As a matter of fact, Mr. Tulsa looked down there and one of my classmates from that year was watching this morning. <laughs> Good friend. Hallelujah. Praise God. That was an awesome time. But I, I learned, see, I grew up Pentecostal, heard all the Pentecostal messages. We had, we had, that's, if you want to know where I'm not that preaching in the way it gets on, we came from, it came from our Pentecostal roots. Because, mm -hmm. see, God, God makes deposits Amen. in preparation for where you're going. That's Amen. Right. Amen. That's right. Amen. I'm telling you. I believe that. I do too. I mean, there's, there's deposits that are made, they're, they're set to your account right. and waiting for you it to is. walk into a place with Him that He's going to bring those out. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And I was kind of an anomaly back then because everybody was a teacher and I was a preacher. You know? And uh, you know, now I teach more, but I still like to preach. I'd rather be under the preacher anointing than, than eat. Mm -hmm. I'll be honest with you. There's, there's nothing like that anointing for, for praying. If you've ever been in a preacher and been a preacher anointing, they don't like it. <laughs> okay? But see, then teachers who all have been, who really have that teacher anointing like that, you just make yourself the edge of your seat. And they love being there. <laughs> I'd rather come you would spit four rows back. Four <laughs> <laughs> visors. Glory to God. Yeah, everybody start wearing visors in the church. But that freedom. Why would we? You know, when Israel came out of Egypt, they were so happy. Mm -hmm. And they why wish to God we're back in Egypt. What's happened? Satan's come to try to put them back into captivity. Right. Yep. Right. Why do we want to go back into what we've been set free from? Amen. Yeah. Amen. You really don't. You really don't. Yeah. Deception's coming. Mm -hmm. To try to tell you that it's okay to be there. That it's actually pretty cool to be there. Yeah. No. There's no stairway out of hell into heaven. I know Led Zeppelin wrote it. The, the, the lead singer for Led Zeppelin wrote that, but there's not. It's not a back staircase. Amen. It's not a cool place. You're not going to go to party hardy in hell and then make it up to heaven. Amen. There's no joy. There's sin and there's pleasure in sin for a season. Mm -hmm. And then pay that shows up. Right. Yeah. Now I remember one time, uh, I'm going to try to close up here. Janie had a kidney stone. Mm -hmm. We took her to the doctor. You know, they actually, he said, he went to the hospital. And they did, they ran the dye in her and stuff. Said, well, you got this kidney stone, da 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 da, -da. We, can, we can either let it try to pass out, pass, or we can, uh, we can remove it. And we're going to have to go up, you know, and, and, and capture it and drop and drag it down and all this. He said, and they, they wanted to let it see if she could pass the kidney stone. So they gave her Dilaudid. And if you don't know what Dilaudid is, it's a synthetic heroin. <laughs> I remember that. Okay? I mean, it's, it's, it's actually synthetic heroin. And um, so they gave her that lot. Yeah. She said she never wanted to have it again. Yeah. She said because it went to her vein and it started, it just felt warm and awesome as it went through her body. She said, I don't ever want it again. Now, we're driving back to pick up our kids and I look over and she's got her head against the window. <laughs> she's high as a kite. <laughs> Honey, are you okay? Yeah. Are you still hurting? Yeah. <laughs> but I don't care. <laughs> this is what bondage will do. 
it'll it'll give you a euphoria and you'll say, are you bound? Yeah, but I don't care. Right. Mm -hmm. But it's not equivalent no. to the joy and peace and tranquility of the liberty in Christ. Amen. Don't be deceived Amen. by the enemy. Right. There's nothing back there. Yeah. You left it behind. The promised land's in front of you. The yes. blessings are in front of Amen. you. The good things are in front of you. They're not behind you. Amen. Walking with God brings those blessings. Amen. Walk in the liberty wherewith you know, walk in the liberty wherewith Christ has set you free or made you free. Amen. That's where we want to be. That's right. Amen. I said that's where we want to be. Amen. So freedom, liberty, deliverance is good. He satisfies your mouth with good, good things. Amen? Amen. Praise yes. the Lord. Glory to God. So uh, next week we're going to pick up and uh, we're going to talk about having our needs met. And then we're going to be moving into eventually. <laughs> you know me in series. I think there are going to be two services in the end of three months. Um, it happens that way. What, what can you say? Um, we'll, we'll move into that next week. But praise the Lord. Walk in freedom. Let the life of God on the inside, the law of the spirit of life that's in Christ Jesus, rise up in you. Let the greater one, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world, rise up in you. Let the Zoe life of God, the absolute life of God, life in the manner that God possesses it, rise up in you. And walk in the liberty that he's given you. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. First John 4, 4. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Amen. God is good. Somebody say all the time. Oh, no. Praise God. Well, we sure love you. Uh, thank you all for joining us today. We love you. God bless you. Until we meet again here at Faith and Victory Church, remember this. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. See you next time here at Faith and Victory Church. Amen. Amen. <laughs>